Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared and we're about to play Underwater Cities. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. As I go over everything, feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. For your convenience, I've added timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. Underwater Cities is set in a dystopian future where the Earth has become overpopulated and the best option is to expand to live underwater. Underwater nations begin to build up and form a federation of nations. Each nation is a connected network of undersea cities and tunnels. Players will compete to build the best underwater nation, implementing kelp farms, desalination plants, and laboratories to have the most integrated and sustainable underwater ecosystem. The world's hope lies in your ability to expand your network from a single city to an underwater metropolis. An expansion has come out called New Discoveries, which further expands your metropolises. At the bottom of the sea, you'll find New Discoveries, earning your nation prestige by building up the International Museum. Before I get ahead of myself, let's start with how to set up the game. The game board is double-sided. One side is used in a three or four player game, and the other side for two player games. Lay it out in the center of the table for the number of players in your game. Create supply piles near the board of the various components. You'll have credits, tunnels, cities, kelp, steel plast, science, and biomatter. The small green, yellow, and white discs are the different building types. Separate these into like piles as well. The basic resources and buildings are meant to be unlimited. Now set out the three era card decks and shuffle them separately. Place the shuffled blue era one deck here on the board. The other two decks can sit off the board nearby. In a four player game, you'll place the action cloning tile on the board here near the center. Otherwise, it won't be used and can be returned to the game box. Place the era marker on the start space of the era track along the right side of the board. The purple domes are known as symbiotic city domes. In a two player game, only keep seven in the available supply. With three players, keep 10 available, and a four-player game uses all 13. The white domes are non-symbiotic cities and are limited to the supply of 17. The tunnels are also limited to the 47 included tokens. Separate the special cards into two different piles. One will have three credits on the backs as well as the letter S. Shuffle each stack separately. Place the stack of special cards without the credits face down in the center of the board on the space for it. Then turn the top card face up. From the other shuffled deck, Deal six face up in these six spaces for them on the main board. The rest of these cards can return to the box. The six dealt cards are the only ones available this game from the three credit special cards. You may play with the government contracts in your game as well, but it's optional. These act as milestones players can earn. Each contract can only be claimed once and by a single player. Shuffle the cards showing the flag icon and draw three face up they'll sit on the board covering their spaces. The rest of them won't be used and can return to the box. If you have one of the newer printings of the game or got your hands on the Biodome promo card, you'll have this available to add into your game as well. Place the Biodome card near the board or near the government contracts with the green dome on it. It can be earned once during the game as well. Everyone chooses a color to be and takes the associated three action tiles, three discs, personal assistant card, and final scoring card in their color. Each personal assistant works the same unless you add in alternatives from the expansion. Each player should also take a player info card to sit near them for reference. Each player gains the same starting resources, one kelp, one steel plast, one science, and two credits. The credits are the currency in this game. Deal each player six blue era one cards from the deck. Each player should choose three to keep and three to discard. Everyone places one of their color discs at zero on the score track found in the bottom right of the board. The cell phone area near the left of the board is for turn order. First, each player places one of their discs at the bottom area, covering their matching spot. For the first round of the game, randomize the turn order on the left. From top to bottom is first to last of the turn order. Then, only for the first turn, place each player's disc in reverse order on the right side, which is known as the Federation track. 
The first player to go should put their extra disc below the track. The second player will place their second disc on space 4 of the Federation track. Player 3 also places a disc on space 3 of the Federation track and gains the bonus 1 credit shown. And the last player starts on space 2 of this track gaining one Steel Plast and one Credit Bonus. These bonuses are always in addition to the normal starting resources. Give each player their own Undersea Nation board to sit in front of them at the table. They are different, so try to randomize passing out the boards. The boards are two-sided and show a different amount of stars in the bottom right area. For your first game, everyone should use the single star side. For more variety and asymmetry, use the three star sides. Everyone's nation begins in the bottom right corner of their board. Place one white dome over this city area. Separate the brown hexagonal metropolis tiles from the blue ones. Mix them up separately and deal one brown one to each player, then deal two blue hex tiles to each player. The brown metropolis must go in the upper left corner. The two blue ones will go in the other indicated corners, decided randomly. Now you're set up and ready to play. Underwater cities will play in a series of rounds which slowly progress up the era track into three total eras. Each round lets players take turns placing three action tiles around the board to take various actions. The first era lasts four rounds, with eras two and three lasting only three rounds. At the end of the final round in the third era, the game ends and final scoring will take place. Additionally, there are special production turns built in after each era. All players will get to produce various resources simultaneously during these periods. Then each connected city will need to consume one kelp. When moving into a new era, the deck of cards is replaced with the new era's cards. The turn order is shown on the phone art on the board. As players gain federation, their secondary disc can move up the right side of the track gaining the bonuses shown on each one it lands on. The following turn order is determined by the positions of their discs on the Federation track. Players stay in relative turn order if not on the Federation track. The topmost disc on a stack will be ahead of the ones below it. You'll always start your turn with three cards. If you have more than that when it comes to you, you must discard down to three before taking your turn. You may place one of your available action tiles on an empty action space on the board. Additionally, you must spend one of your cards. If the card you play matches the color of the action area your tile was placed, the card will get to be played as well. Otherwise, it's discarded without effect. You can choose the order of resolving the board's action or the card's action first. Then draw one card from the current era deck to end your turn. If you're holding more than three cards, you may discard the extras at any point leading up to your next turn. If the current era deck is empty, you should shuffle the discard pile and create a new deck to draw from. As you can see, there are three color areas on the board. The cards also share these colors, green, red, and yellow. The yellow board actions are the strongest, with the green actions the weakest. To balance this, the yellow card actions are the weakest, and the green card actions are the strongest. Red is always moderate. Aside from the different colors, you'll find five kinds of cards in the game. Check the symbol in the upper left corner. The lightning bolt icon means the card's ability triggers as soon as it's played. The card color must match the board space you've chosen for it to be played, of course. As an instant effect, resolve the card's text immediately or after you perform the board action. After resolving the card, discard it to the game board's discard pile. The infinity symbol indicates the card has a permanent effect for you for the remainder of the game. After playing it, keep it near you on the board and gain its benefits as it's described. These benefit you situationally, such as offering discounts or triggering when a certain event happens. These effects may be applied on the same turn the card is played. Action cards like your starting personal assistant show an A in the corner. Playing an action card from your hand puts it on the board in front of you, but does not immediately give you its effect. Action cards in front of you must be triggered by a board or card effect, and usually only once per era. When they are triggered, you should tap it sideways. During the production round, all tapped action cards are refreshed to be used again in the next era. Each player may only have four action cards at a time played in front of them. If playing a fifth action card down, you must discard one of your four first. If you choose an action card to discard that wasn't used yet, you're allowed to immediately trigger its effect before discarding it. The gear symbol are cards that trigger during the production phase. There are only three production phases in the game, and all occur at the end of an era. These cards produce resources or modify your nation's production based on what's connected in your network. Any 
the cards with the stopwatch symbol are in scoring cards. Any of these you've played during the game will be able to score you extra points at the end of the game. Each one scores in a different way, so follow the card's text. Each card's effects are described out on page 19 of the rulebook. The special cards have a large S on the back and have an extra cost to play them. The extra cost is one, two, or three credits, as shown under the stopwatch icon. The credits are paid when the card is played from your hand, not when they're picked up. If discarding a special card, place it face down on the bottom of the special card's deck. Also, the three credit special cards are limited to the six set up at the beginning of the game. If you discard one of these, return it to the game box. As you play cards in front of you that are permanent, production, action, or in-game scoring cards, I recommend keeping them organized together by their type. Stacking them with the top portion of the cards visible will allow you to quickly see all the card's effects and abilities. The special cards you play that have an instant effect are still kept. Place them under your board for the end of the game. Following the turn order, each player will have a turn to use one of their three action tiles and spend a card. A full round is over once every player has placed all three of their action tiles and finished their turns. Place one of your action tiles on an empty action space on the board to take the associated action. After placing your tile, you can choose to play a card of the same color and activate it before doing the board action or do the board action first. The only thing that matters is you complete all the actions available before moving on to the other. Some board actions and cards provide multiple things you can do. You may do them all in any order that best benefits you. If you don't have a card to play that matches the color of the board space, or don't want to use it, you must still spend a card by discarding it straight to the discard pile. After resolving all the actions you can do, you must draw a card off the top of the era deck. You can take as many cards as actions give you, but by the start of your next turn, you must have discarded down to three. Action slots already chosen may not be chosen again this round. Only empty spaces are available for players to place their action tiles. The game board has varying action spaces based on the two-player game or the three to four player board side. When you place your tile, you can choose not to do every action available either because you don't want to or can't due to resources or availability. You must do at least part of the action to go there. It's the same with playing a card. During the game, you'll get to build things on your board, always extending out from your starting city. The cities will get to occupy the large circle spaces and tunnels occupy the connecting rectangular spaces. The smaller circles that surround cities are building sites where any building type can be placed. More than one of the same type can surround a single city. Anytime there's an icon or resource pictured within the space you build a structure, you gain it immediately. The alternate board side includes red dotted areas, meaning you must pay what's shown in the space in order to place the structure there. These costs are in addition to the structure's normal cost. Once you're able to extend your network via tunnels to connect to a metropolis, you gain the bonus shown. The top of the tile shows the lightning bolt symbol, meaning you gain the top bonus immediately. Some of the tiles have a production icon shown at the bottom. These only provide the bonus shown during the production phases. The brown metropolis requires two tunnels to be placed there before it's considered connected. They are all for end of game scoring and offer no immediate rewards. After each player has finished their third turn, the round ends. First, everyone collects all their action tiles from the board. In a four-player game, someone who took the action cloning tile should return it to the middle of the table. Then, you'll reorder the player order discs on the phone area. The farthest player up on the Federation track and the highest on the stacks will go first in the next round. The next player on the Federation track goes second, and so on. Any players still below the Federation track will keep their relative turn order to the others there. Arrange the discs on the left to represent the new order. Then, reset the other discs back to the bottom below space 4. Finally, advance the era marker on the side of the board. If moving the marker onto a production icon, you'll do a production phase, and then proceed to the next era. Let's take a look at the different actions on the board for a three or four player game. The green actions on the board are the weakest. The first one shows the Federation icon twice. That means you get to move your disc two spots up the Federation track on the right of the turn order phone. For each space your disc lands on or passes, you gain the benefit on the right. If you've reached the top spot, you'll earn a victory point for every increase. When moving upward, your disc goes to the top of the stack of any other player's discs already there. This space lets you build two desalination plants. All the building requirements are shown in the far left column of your player aid. 
Each plant will cost one credit. Pay any required resources from your collection to the general supply. This green action space lets you choose to gain one kelp or build a city. You cannot gain both at the same time. New cities must be placed on empty city spaces adjacent to existing cities. Tunnels are not required to be there first. You can choose to build a white non-symbiotic city or the purple symbiotic city for a larger cost. The purple symbiotic cities will earn points during each production phase, while the white ones don't. However, both types will score points at the very end, depending on how many buildings are surrounding it. The white domes cost two steel plast, one kelp, and one credit. The purple domes cost one steel plast, one kelp, one biomatter, and two credits. Biomatter is a difficult resource to gain. However, if you have it, you may always choose to spend a biomatter instead of a steel plast or kelp as building material. This space gives you one steel plast resource and lets you activate one of your played action cards. Resolve the effect of the action card and tap it sideways to note it's been used. In this green action space, you may choose one of the two options. You may build one tunnel or take everything shown on the right. First, move your disc up one space on the Federation track, gaining any bonuses there. Then take one credit from the supply and draw two cards off the top of the current era deck. You'll still get to end your turn by drawing a card, so you'll have some extras to choose from. By the start of your next turn, you must have discarded down to three. Along the red side of the board, you'll find the moderately strong action this action allows you to build two farms at two different sites. Each one costs one kelp. A building occupies the solid line circles around a city. Buildings can be placed on empty sites near existing cities or at sites adjacent to existing cities. The dotted circles are expansion sites, which can only be used via certain cards. The costs of each building are shown on the player aid. This red action space lets you build one tunnel and one city you may choose which type of city to build. A tunnel costs one steel plast and one credit. Tunnels are placed on empty tunnel spaces face up. The tunnels must be connected to your starting city, meaning you can trace a path along the tunnel routes back to the starting city in the corner. Connected tunnels can go through empty city sites. This action space gives you two steel plast and one kelp resource. This one lets you build two laboratory buildings at two different building sites. Each one costs one steel plast. This red space lets you activate one of your action cards and build a structure and immediately upgrade it. You could build a tunnel, farm, desalination plant, or laboratory at their normal cost, then pay the extra one science resource to upgrade them. To upgrade a tunnel, flip it over so the victory point side is face up. To upgrade a building, place a second building of the same type directly on top. Upgraded buildings provide more resources during production. In the orange area, this space provides one science, one steel plast, and one kelp. Keep your collected resources near you. The next space lets you build two tunnels. Make sure the side showing the victory point is face down. Each tunnel must be paid for in full. This action space lets you activate one of your action cards played in front of you. Your personal assistant is also an action card that can be triggered. You should also draw one special card. You may choose one of the six face-up special cards or the top card from the special deck. Or you can choose to put the topmost card on the bottom of the deck and draw three special cards. You can keep one of them and place the other two on the bottom of the deck as well. When done, flip over the top card of the deck. Special cards are played like other cards, meaning it should be paired with a matching color board space to play it. They also have a credit cost shown on them, which you must also pay when you play it. Keep these in front of you, even if they have an instant effect. The last action space on the orange side allows you to build one city and one building. Choose the white or purple city dome to build in an adjacent empty space to one of your existing cities. If there are no purple domes left in the starting supply, you may not build them anymore. You may also build one new building type out of the three. Farms cost one kelp. Desalination plants cost one credit, and laboratories cost one steel plast to build. The final orange space gives a choice to either take two science or spend science tokens already collected to upgrade structures on your board. You may spend up to three science to upgrade up to three structures. One science per structure. This includes tunnels and buildings. Once upgraded, they may not be upgraded again. Once someone has claimed an action space, no one else may place their tile there that round. However, the board also contains an always available slot. Even if someone's claimed it, you may still go there. It has no color associated with it, so no card may be played when going there. You must still discard a chosen card. After discarding the card, draw two off the era deck and gain two credits. If playing a four-player game, you'll have the action cloning tile added to the board. 
Since spaces get filled up quickly, the special tile lets one player claim it to use an occupied action space. To use it, pay one credit and take the cloning tile. You can keep it near you, then place your action tile on top of another player's tile for the action you want to do. You may not cover your own action tile, it must be an opponent's. Gain the normal benefits of the action chosen. You should still play a card as part of your turn. If the card you play matches the color of the chosen space, you may play it for its effects. This is a one-time use per round. After everyone's completed all their turns, the cloning tile will be returned to its space and can be used again in the next round. When the era marker moves onto the production space on the era track, you'll go through the production phase. There's an overview of the steps to take on the player aid. Each player can produce from their nation board simultaneously. Everything in your network will produce. Tunnels adjacent to cities and buildings on adjacent sites to cities in your connected network will all produce. Connected symbiotic cities also produce two points. Cities not connected to your network via tunnels won't produce, nor will the buildings on it. Metropolises with the production symbol will produce as long as a tunnel connects to it and the tunnel connects to your network. However, the tunnel itself won't produce unless it's connected directly to a city dome. Each single farm building will earn you one kelp resource. Each single upgraded farm will earn a kelp and a victory point. But if you have two upgraded farms adjacent to a city, those produce together three kelp and three points. Each single desalination plant will earn you one credit. Each single upgraded desalination plant will earn a credit and a biomatter resource. If you have two upgraded plants adjacent to a city, those produce, together, three credits and two biomatter. Each single laboratory will earn you one science resource. Each single upgraded lab will earn a science and a steel plast. If you have two upgraded labs adjacent to a city, those produce, together, two science and three steel plast. Each tunnel you have on your board connected to a city in your network will produce one credit. If the tunnel is upgraded, it also provides a victory point in addition to the credit. All connected symbiotic cities will provide two victory points each. The alternate board side may also have production multipliers. Gain the connected structure's resources as many times as the multiplier shows. It only multiplies the single earnings from the building there, not the combined earnings. The multipliers only have this effect during production. Now check for your connected metropolises that have a production icon. These will now provide the resources or points shown on the bottom of its tile. After producing from the board, check for any of your played cards that have a production symbol on them. These cards will produce now as well. Then refresh your used action cards. The tapped cards become untapped. Next, every player must spend one kelp or one biomatter per connected city to feed the people. If you have the kelp, you must pay it. Then if you have biomatter, you must use that. If still you cannot pay for each connected city, then you'll lose three points for each unfed city. Remember, only cities connected to the network must be fed. After the production phase, you'll be moving into a new era or the end of the game. To continue with moving to the next era, Remove the current era's deck of cards and discard pile from the board. Shuffle the next era's deck and place it on the board space in its place. Deal three cards from the new era deck to each player, regardless of how many cards they're currently holding. From their hand of cards, they must choose three to keep and discard the rest. Discarded cards from the previous era will return to the game box with its used deck. Move the era marker to the first space of the new era. Once everyone has discarded down to three cards, continue with playing the round like normal, following the turn order track. After completing the final production phase at the end of the third era, you'll proceed to the end of the game scoring. Follow the order of final scoring on the final scoring card. Everyone can calculate their score simultaneously. First, check to see if you've connected to the brown in-game metropolis tile in the upper left corner of your board. It takes two tunnels to connect to it. Each tile provides points differently following different criteria. Check the back of the rulebook on page 20 for details on how each one scores if it's unclear. Next, review the in-game scoring cards you've played. Most of them will be from special cards. Some reward you for accomplishments, and others allow you to buy points with resources. Spend whatever you can, as this is the best method to use these final resources. Each city in your network will now score you a variable amount of points depending on how many building types are present there. Each city without buildings gives two points. A city with one building type gives three points. 
a city with two types of buildings, four points, and if all three types of buildings are adjacent to a city, it provides you six points. Finally, resources are converted to credits, which will give you points at a ratio. Each biomatter resource in your collection converts into two credits each. Then each remaining basic resource is worth one credit. Add up all your credits and gain victory points at a four to one ratio. Every four credits is a point. Anything left over is lost. The winner of the game will be the one with the most points. If there's a tie, it's broken by the turn order. For this reason, remember to update the turn order track even after the last turn. Regardless of who won, take time to appreciate the extensive network of underwater cities you've built. Because of your efforts, millions of people now have food, water, and shelter. Great work. Underwater Cities comes with a solo mode with a few changes to the rules. You should use the alternate advanced side of your player board. Use the two-player side of the main board. Do not use the government contract cards. Limit the number of symbiotic city domes available based on a two-player game, so only have seven. Remove this metropolis from the game before randomizing a brown metropolis for yourself. Choose a color for yourself, plus a different color for the opponent. Use the three opponent's color action tiles to occupy the first action slot of each color if moving clockwise. You will always go first, so you only need one of your player discs on the phone area to keep track of moving up the Federation track. Play your round like normal, but respecting the occupied slots. At the end of each round, also advance the three opponent color action tiles one space clockwise. Then if you did not advance on the Federation track at all, you'll add a fourth action tile to occupy another random slot of the board. To determine which, flip over the top card of the era deck and add its digits together to get a number. Starting with the first green action slot as one, count clockwise around the board until you reach that number. Place the extra action tile there. If it's occupied, move it clockwise to the first empty slot. The fourth action tile is only used when you did not advance on the Federation track. Otherwise, keep moving the normal three opponent tiles clockwise each round throughout the game. To win the solo game, you should finish with at least seven connected cities and at least 100 points. Keep track of your scores and try to beat your best. Underwater Cities has one large expansion released to date called New Discoveries. In it, new cards, new starting assistants, starting tiles, player boards, metropolis tiles, and a museum board are added to the game to increase the depth of strategy. The expansion includes eight double-sided recessed player boards. Four of them are recessed versions of the original base game player boards, and four are used in conjunction with the expansion. When using these boards, make sure players are using the same set. Within the four board set, you can randomly assign boards to players. In addition to the new content, the expansion also includes extra building tokens to help decrease the chance of running out. The new cards from the expansion can be shuffled into the base game card decks. They're fully compatible and can be used even when not adding the new discoveries content. There are 18 new Era 1 cards, 15 new Era 2 cards, and 11 new era 3 cards. There's three new 1 to 2 credit special cards and five new 3 credit special cards. To start the game using the new discoveries content, first shuffle all the new assistant cards and deal two to each player. Return the standard assistants and extras to the box. Before taking your first turn, you must choose one of these to keep and one to return to the box. The chosen card is now your starting assistant, which comes with variable abilities and used like a normal action card. If a rule or effect relates to a card's type, your assistant is always treated as an action card. Each new assistant card is fully explained in the rulebook if you have questions on their effects. Now shuffle all the starting resource tiles and deal a number of them face up for players to see. Place out one more tile than there are players in the game. Return the rest of the tiles to the game box. Players won't start with Federation track bonuses or the standard starting resources anymore. After players have been dealt six cards and before they've discarded down to three, players will choose an available starting resource tile in reverse turn order. After taking the tile, take all the shown resources. If it provides a building, it will be placed adjacent to your starting city. Gaining a tunnel from the tile should be placed on a legal building space for them. None of these starting bonus structures must be paid for. After gaining the starting resources, return the tiles to the box. When playing with these variants, place the arrow marker on the second space of the arrow track. You'll skip round one. Other than that, you may still play the standard game with just these changes. There are several new ways to play the game with this expansion too. There's the Metropolis Race, Metropolis 
Metropolis Choice and the Museum variants. To use the Metropolis Race variant, do not give players starting blue Metropolis tiles. Use the same set of boards numbered either 1 to 4, 5 to 8, or 9 to 12. Randomly draw out a number of blue Metropolis tiles equal to the number of players plus 1. Do the same with the new green Metropolis tiles. Return extras to the box. Randomly give each player one brown Metropolis tile to place on their board like normal. During the game, the first time you connect to one of the two blank Metropolis spaces on your board, you may choose one of the available blue Metropolis tiles to place it there. When connecting the second empty space, you may choose a green metropolis to place there. First come, first serve on the best tiles. Another game variant you can implement in your game with the expansion is called Metropolis Choice. In this variant, you'll play a standard game, but use the special variant player boards numbered 13 to 16. Assign each player one of these boards randomly. Each board shows a number of different colored Metropolis tiles you can choose from. So if each color had two in it, then that means that person should draw two of each color tile from the shuffled piles. Before taking your first turn, you must choose which three Metropolis tiles to use. The color of the space they're placed and the color of the tile must match. The strongest of the expansion's new content is the museum board. Players must use the player boards numbered 9 to 12 to add the museum variant to the game. Always assign the boards randomly. Each player should take the five discovery tiles that match their color and keep it near them. The museum board is double-sided. You can use either. To set up side A, randomly choose a brown metropolis tile to place near row 4. Then randomly select four one or two credit special cards to place beside the four spaces of column three. To set up side B, randomly choose two green metropolis tiles to place near column three. Then randomly select three three credit special cards to place beside row four. Set up the main board like normal, including the six three credit special cards in their face up locations. Deal out random brown and blue metropolis tiles for each player like in a standard game. The player sitting to your right should take Take your five discovery tiles and shuffle them up face down. Then they should place them randomly on your board on the indicated discovery places shown with the expansion symbol on it. In this way, you won't know where any of the discovery tiles are until you reveal them individually later. The discovery sites are attached to certain building sites on the board. Whenever you build the structure at that connected site, you may flip over the connected tile to reveal its benefit. Afterwards, add the tile to the museum board. Your tiles must be added in numerical order, 1 through 5, as shown by the Roman numerals. The first one always goes directly in the middle of the board, in group 1. By placing it there, you immediately get to draw two cards. For the second through fifth discovery tile you place on the board, you can choose a reward from those available in that group. For example, your second revealed tile will be placed on one of the rewards in the bottom row labeled 2. These show a production icon in the corner, meaning you'll gain the shown reward during each production phase. Once someone's claimed a reward, their tile stays there, preventing anyone else from claiming the same one. The rulebook explains in detail what each reward does for each side of the museum board. If the space is green, it's to remind you that it should be prepped before the game starts. Looking at side A of the museum board, you'll see that the rewards in area 2 are resources or points which are earned during the production phase. Column 3 has the face-up special cards you may claim and play in front of you for free. The museum is already paid for it. If the space also shows points, you gain those immediately too. The fourth area at the top of the board has varying rewards. You could take the brown metropolis tile as an extra scoring tile. It'll be placed near your starting city and is considered connected. This one doubles the scoring value of a single special card you've played for the end of the game. This one lets you double the scoring value of one of your brown metropolis tiles. The last one is simply three points. The fifth column shows victory points immediately earned. On the new player boards, you may see some icons that mean the metropolis tile there is doubled. These icons will double any effects the tile gives whether they are immediately earned, gained during production, or points at the end of the game. The new boards also have structure sites that have surcharges attached to them, indicated by the red and black outline. In some cases, rewards are gained by placing buildings, but you must have a building placed on each of the encircled sites. Once you add that last one, you immediately gain the shown bonus. And that's everything added from the expansion. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. Check the video description for links to Top Shelf Gamer for token upgrades and SleeveKings.com for a 10% off coupon on card sleeves. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video. 
And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.